Welcome back to ECS viewers. Chris Nichols here from the camera store again, and we've got a very exciting camera for you guys today, the brand new Fujifilm X-Pro2. Very exciting because we've been waiting for this camera for years now. This is the successor to the X-Pro1, which really launched Fuji's success in the mirrorless world, and of course, now they're doing fantastic. Now also, special guest, Nathan Ellison. Hello. Now, of course, you probably recognize Nathan. He's been on our show many, many times, but not only because he's a great friend, but Nathan's actually a Fuji X photographer, so they actually get him early gear, and you've had this camera for a little while, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've had uh, a pre-production version of this camera since beginning of November, so I've had some time with it, getting to play around with it a little bit. I was, you know, a strictly X Pro 1 shooter, so I've been waiting for this camera for a long time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, today we're going to test it on a few different the way it's the street, the studio, see Absolutely. what it does. see and, what it does. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny, Nathan got this before us. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but, yeah, you're the one to talk about on this camera, eh? I Absolutely. mean, you really love the X-Pro1, the shooting style. Yeah. So I want to see if this is shooting the same way as the X-Pro1. Have they changed it? Let's go take some photos. Perfect. See what Sounds happens. good. Now, of course, one of the quintessential features about this camera is going to be the optical hybrid view. Absolutely. Finder, right? I mean, you talked about this rangefinder design. Yep. This camera has it. Yep. XC2, it doesn't, right? That's the whole point. Yep. For me, the optical viewfinder is not a great thing. I mean, the X100T had the picture in picture electronic rangefinder. Yeah. This has it too. I still find it distracting. And I honestly use the EVF. I'm using EVF too. Of the time. And yeah. it's like they're making the EVF so much better, yeah. it kind of pulls away from the optical viewfinder. No, I agree. Have you used it? You know, like, is it fun to use on the street? Is that where you'd use it or not really? Uh, you know, most of the time I don't do a lot of street photography. It's not really my thing. I'm more of a portrait guy. So, I mean, on, I, the EVF has been my, my home. Yeah. So, to be to completely gotcha. honest. But, uh, yeah, you <laughs> but know. But it's I, fun, right? Yeah, it's it has its uses. But for my style of shooting, it hasn't been, you know. Yeah, I'd agree. Amazing. I'm going to be EVF only. Yeah. We're also getting the picture-in-picture. It's kind of borrowed from the X100T. Yep. And the 85 frame per second uh, refresh rate. Now, that should get very close to how like the human eye sees refresh rate. Yeah, from a lag perspective, there's way almost better. none. You know, it, it's, no, it's there's not a lot of strain on the eye when you're moving back and forth, anything like that. It's not, you know, dragging or anything. It's actually, it's beautiful. So, other design features we have on the camera, the back screen, beautiful, very sharp, 1.6 yep. million dots. And I know you like your screens. I do, I you use do. them a lot. Yep. I uh, I don't. Yeah. I like the camera to my face. I like to look to the viewfinders. I don't use the screen. You've got to cover your other hideous face, right? Like, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't use it for anything other than like quick reviews, menu selections, that kind Fair of thing. Enough. So I mean, the screen is beautiful, but it doesn't do anything. I find it kind of camera. odd though. You know, with all the cameras in the market now going to even a vertical flip, this yep. camera, the screen is totally fixed. And I don't know. It might be nice to see that change. It would be, you know, having, you know, just a screen to pop out for, you know, those weird instances where you're trying to get, you know, the yeah, lower angle, different that kind angle of thing. I could definitely like see it being a bonus. But again, for someone like me, it's used so little mm. that, you know, I don't feel like I'm missing it, but gotcha. I do see the benefits of actually having it. All right, now, Nate, exposure comp dial on the top right, totally yep. classic feature, had it on Absolutely. the rack. I mean, in fact, almost all Fuji's have got it there. Yep. They did kind of incorporate into the thumb grip, and it's a nice, comfortable grip. I'm it is. I did turn it by accident though up here. Did you notice that? Every once in a while, yeah, you, you will click it. Um, you yeah. know, it, it's stiff, but I mean, you can only make it so stiff before it becomes unusable, that exactly. kind of thing. You know, you have to be a little bit watchful of your phone watch in that it. regard. But They've got a custom function on there too, so you can use the command dials to tweak it even further if Absolutely. you want to. Absolutely, go up to five more than instead of three. Yeah. Why would you go more than plus three stops? I don't know. But talking about command dials, you've got these nice metal knurled knobs now. Pretty yeah. sweet, actually. Absolutely. And I mean, for me, um, being able to control the shutter speed now, you know, coming off the dial was great, but being able to actually set it so that you can go through the entire range with the dial on the front, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's super fluid. Um, having the the focused button on the back with that the toggle, absolutely genius, amazing, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm I'm not going to say 100% for sure, but I think this is the first mirrorless camera to have that. If not, it's at least I, one of the first. Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely, and it's I mean, great. 273 focus points now to work through. You can basically set it anywhere in your frame, and of course, it's sharp. It's super, super quick, sharp. super yeah. easy. You know, it's funny though. Yeah, they have increased it to 270 or 273, 273 points. Yeah. But uh, 
It's got 40% coverage. They've expanded that as well. More yep. of the central area, which is always a good thing. Yep. I still find though, like 273 is a lot. I just go back down to 77. I mean, it's still. See, and I'm the thing. opposite. I go up really? to just, yeah. I like to put the focus point like dead on eyes and stuff like that. I'm very finicky that way. If I don't have to move my camera at all, you know, <laughs> bonus. Fine, fine. Yeah. Let's keep the screen. Screen. Right. <laughs> now the shutter mechanism, brand new for this camera. Eight thousandth of a second maximum shutter speed sync. Yep. I mean, again, not something we use very often, but it's nice to have. Yeah. I mean, there's always you know instances where you know it pops up yep. where. Super sunny open. day, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Electronic shutter borrowed from the X100T, same idea, 32,000th of a second electronic shutter. Yep. You do get some rolling shutter with the Fujis if you're going to shoot, but it's great for stills if you need the stability and the quietness. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the big things that uh, you know a lot of people have been calling for, myself included, is the dual card slot, yeah. which we now have in the X-Pro2, which is great. You know, having the ability to have that instant backup or to be able to have the card carry over to another one, RAW plus JPEG, all of that, amazing. I do like also that they've incorporated now, the first slot is a UHS-2 speed yes. slot. So if you get the right cards, even faster buffer yeah, rates, fast. nice and quick. I mean, very, very nice idea. Yeah. And then also, you know, the diopter, another one of those things where, you know, people with glasses, that kind of thing, using these cameras can <laughs> we be... Don't, no, 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 exactly. These are perfect. But, you know, having the option there for those that do, Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people have called for that as well, so it's nice to see And it is nice to have it. Again, the only issue I have there, the eye relief still isn't great in the viewfinder, but yes, it is good to have. Much better still. So I believe we're in black and white right now. Nate, I, yeah, which, I think so. Uh, which brings us to our next part of the talk. I love black and white. You've been shooting, I've been a, lot. shooting a ton of black yeah. and white over the last year. And of course, Fuji have always had a black and white mode, but yeah. now they've added an Acros film profile, right? Keeping along with their whole film profile yeah. thing. And I love super contrasty black and white. Yeah. I don't like things to come off flat. I all of my work is very shadow detail, everything like that. So yeah. having the Acros in there with that like Very super cool. deep black and white depth. I love it. It mixes the same grain structure that we're used to and on top of that I love that you can do yellow filter, red filter, exactly. green filter yep. in there with it. I mean honestly I still think and I'm, I'm assuming you probably do still a lot of color work and you're going to turn it to black and white afterwards. Yeah exactly. Sure. Yeah but, but I mean having feature. this in camera for it is just I mean it gives you that amazing preview exactly. if nothing else so that you know what it's going to look like after the conversion. Exactly. Now in the X-Pro2, you've got a brand new quad-core processor in here. It's promising to give us better video capabilities, better focusing capabilities, better buffer rates, and it has done a lot of that. But when it comes to video on the Fujis, I know we sound like broken records, we've done this before. We're getting manual control, but no headphone jack. You know, the preamp's nothing to write home about either. And you know, Fuji's still not incorporating any sort of codec that's gonna make it compete on the video market. That's okay, Fuji seems very comfortable being a high-end stills photographer's camera. Now another big benefit to the X-Pro2 is weather sealing. This is a welcome improvement. Brings this camera in line with the X-T1 and really gives photographers the confidence to shoot and not worry about their camera having a problem. Now I also really am enjoying the brand new 35 F2. Also water resistant, like all Fuji lenses, excellent wide open. The optics always give you the confidence that you need to get the picture that you want. All right, Nathan, I'm cold. Let's head into the studio and let's use this camera the way that you would shoot it. Okay, Nate, so we're back in the studio. We did our street photography. Now we're going to do yes. some model shots. We're going to uh, put a little bit of plug in for our new t-shirt that we're selling at the store as well. There you go. And uh, it brings about one of the most amazing things about this camera, one of the most exciting things, which is the brand new 24 megapixel sensor. Agreed. Right? New processing engine, supposed to have better low light performance. We've got the extra resolution. It is still X-Trans, but we should mention, guys, these are not production units, so we can't shoot raw here tonight. You know, color, white balance, those things it are not going to be fun. Yeah, it's, everything's not finalized on it yet. It's yeah. just kind of, you know, having some fun with the camera, that kind of thing. Now, what kind of stuff do you like on this for the studio stuff? Because there's a couple new features, like the PC sync is kind of funky. <laughs> I mean, okay, we're even... not going to talk about the PC <laughs> sync. But um, the fact that we do have a 250th of a sync speed now is great. Um, before, you know, everything up to this point, I think, has been 180th. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when we're shooting under these lights and stuff like that, we want to kill it out so that we're getting nothing but our studio lighting. Having that faster sync speed is a huge bonus. Big, big benefit. Yeah, yeah with exactly. the new shutter. Yeah, okay, let's do it. I'm ready to be a model. Now, of course, we're carrying both men's and women's shirts, so I'm rocking a woman's medium right now. Pretty sweet. Let's go do it. Suck in my gut.
All right, so I know it's pre-production. Yes. Tough to judge, right? Yep. But you've been using the camera for a while. I have. Color, still the classic Fuji Yeah, color, I mean, exactly what you expect to get mm -hmm. out of their presets, everything like that. Um, you know, we can't get into the raws, but the JPEGs that come out of it, the color is great. It's, yeah. It looks amazing. And that new black and white with Acros is awesome. I loved it, actually, yeah. too. Shooting it today on the street, it yeah. was actually really fantastic. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. You know, we can't really get into like, okay, are the JPEGs sharp, are they not, because it's all early. But, I mean, let's just put it this way. We're getting a brand new 24 megapixel sensor. There's yes. no aliasing filter. We know Fuji's going to do a good job with it. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any problems with high ISO in the shots that we've done, and um, sharpness looks pretty good. I would say we're getting away with 24 megapixels, bringing the Fuji line up to a very current standard. Yeah, we're getting the high resolution. Color, the sharpness. Yeah, for which, when, with what I do into the retouching and everything like that, having that higher resolution, more to work with is amazing. Yeah. I mean, all of, like, I mean, we can say the files are sharp because, I mean, the Fuji glass is... Always so good. Yeah, <laughs> it's been amazing. And I mean, it's not like they're gonna screw it up on the X-Pro2. No. So it's, no. uh, you know, it's gonna be the same sharp files, um, you know, beautiful colors, mm -hmm. kind of everything. So basically for. we're just getting a little bit better, more megapixels, a little bit better lowly performance, same great sharpness, same great lenses. We're happy people. Exactly. All right, Nate, so I've gotten a chance now to use X-Pro2. You've yep. been using it for a while. Absolutely. It still feels very much like the original, right? Yeah. Very similar. And from photographic standpoint, how do you find it as a photographic tool? Well, that was one of the things. When I was talking with Fuji, you know, um, being an ex-photographer, they asked for my input on different things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And one of the major points that I made was that I didn't want the camera to change from the, the actual body perspective. I liked the size of it. I liked where the buttons mm -hmm. were, everything like that. So they essentially took, you know, the X-Pro1, made it so it feels the exact same, but then mm -hmm. added things like the, you know, the toggle button for the joystick. Fantastic, um, I like you that. You know, your, your dials on the outside for your ISO, everything like that. Yep. Just basically made it so that you didn't have to go into the menus for so many things and uh, made the camera just that much easier to use, a lot more fluid, yeah. so. They're certainly sticking to that sort of retro kind of pedigree, you know, and then the niche market and yep. the styling, the design that gives. I know we got a lot of crap at the start when we did Fuji reviews. Yeah. Because everybody's like, they're not retro, they're digital, stop saying that, yeah. but they really are. And Fuji's trying to, to go for that on purpose now. I mean, the yeah. ISO dial pull up, I love that. That's yep. so old school. Uh, you know, having the shutter speed dials, having the optical viewfinder. I mean, these are things that you might not even use but they're there because they build the style, they build the design. They do, they and the but I'm one of those guys that actually does use them, so right. I, I love that they're there, but you know, strictly styling, it's one of those things where people who see me with this camera, you know, I've been on set for you know shoots previous to this, and they say, you know, like, it looks like an old Which retro camera. It's very, yeah, yeah you know, no, it's no, beautiful. You it would look good slung <laughs> over your shoulder, that kind of thing. So, I mean, it's a sexy looking camera. Yeah. I, I, I totally get that, so. You know, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, okay, we're not seeing anything gigantic here, but I think a lot has changed. You know, we talk about how it's so similarly X-Pro1, the design and the spirit yeah. is the same. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, we exactly. are getting a brand new sensor and yeah. it's a great way to get more megapixels. We need that now to bring it up into this new sort of competitive age. I like the control dial with the autofocus. The autofocus is vastly improved as yeah. well on this model. Uh, you know, we have new features that they're throwing in here. We're getting so, the EVF, which the is EVF. huge. Yeah. yeah, you know, and yeah, they're bringing elements from other cameras into Absolutely. this. Yeah. But this is probably the most modern Fuji camera on the market now, but still with such a retro design. So I yeah. think it's a good marriage between the two. Yeah, it's uh, it's an awesome, you know, look good, work well camera type thing. So. That's, that's all there is to say exactly. about it. All right, man, we always appreciate having you here. Oh, thanks, thanks so for much. Out. And uh, hopefully you made me look pretty. I think you did. I think we uh, Even though I was wearing girls' clothes. There we go. And, uh, <laughs> now remember, of course, folks, check us out on Instagram, check us out on Twitter. Check Nathan's workout, absolutely. Check his photography out. Check his Fuji X workout as well. And uh, we will see you guys later. Subscribe and uh, don't wait too long. We're gonna be right back. Yeah.